If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll have seen I've started to do some acrylic painting. I'm enjoying it that much that I've decided I wanted to find some ways to incorporate the acrylic painting into my crafting projects. So today I'm showing you a mixed media piece using the new, also new crafter flower Cosmos. And I've created a mixed media style project with acrylic paints. My name's Verity and welcome to my channel Pretty Little Button. If you're new here, why not think about subscribing? So as I said, this is part of the also new Craft Flower Cosmos blog hop release, so make sure you head over to my blog to follow along. And I'm going to be showing you how to create this mixed media piece of art using the Craft Flower Cosmos, along with a lovely acrylic mixed media background. So let's get started. So for this project, I'm using a canvas board which measures about 7 inches by 5 inches. So you could also use this whole project idea and create it into an actual card front as well if you want. It's an ideal size. To begin with, I'm going to show you how to make the background, and I'm using acrylic paints. So if you wanted to, to make this into a card, just use some of your inks to create the same effect, or watercolour paints. Just get really creative with what you have. Now, I am protecting my surface with a bit of paper. It, however, this is a glass mat that I'm painting on top of, so it is non-porous, so the paint will wipe off and uh, clean up if you, do, if you don't happen to protect it. It's not a problem. So I started off with a kind of a soft grey colour. So I'm using a one and a half inch flat brush initially to add the colour to the board. I'm just using a, a big brush because I want to cover it quite quickly and I don't really want to take too much time if you're using a thinner brush. And this is really good because this will just give me a really rough, I'm not looking for a perfectly covered background, I'm just covering it with the colour. But I'm also adding a little bit of white because I wanted to dull it down a little bit and have a little bit of variation so it's not all the same tone of grey. So adding the whiting can just add that little bit of variation to the colour. I'm going around the outsides, not being necessarily that neat, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to add additional colours onto this as well. So I'm next going to go in with a blue. This is a lovely sort of um, cobalt blue. And I'm just adding very soft amounts and just blending it in with the greys. Now, you want to ensure to get a great blend that your paint is still wet. If it's dried, it might not blend as well. So just bear that in mind. I'm then using a soft lilac blue and I have all the colours listed that I'm using in today's background over on my blog so do check it out and you'll be able to see the colours I use for this background. So I'm just going back in adding some white, some blue, different shades of blue just to add a little bit of variation and depth and interest to this background. I don't want it to be a completely solid flat colour uh, but I don't want it too busy that it's going to detract from my flowers I want to place on it later on. I also add a little bit of a turquoisey blue in just to give it a bit more vibrancy in some areas and I'm blending it with the white as well just to tone it down and help blend it in as well. And once I was finished with the background at that point, which I thought I was happy with the colours, I just set it to one side to dry. So this is the Alter New Crafter Flower Cosmos. It creates two different style flowers as well as some stems and some leaves and I've already die cut them out and I've just put them in a container to one side. Now, to make it look and fit in with the painted background, I'm going to colour these with my watercolour paints. So in order to do that, I have die cut them out of some watercolour cardstock. Now, they are quite thin and fiddly at some, some of the different layers. In order to paint them without them going everywhere, I'm just adhering them temporarily to a scrap piece of cardstock. So I've just added a little bit of repositionable tape and I'm just adhering the first bold layer down onto the card. So if you're ever unsure which layer goes first, the also new always has a layering guide. If you can't find the one that you're looking for, always check out their website, they will have it over there as well. So as I said, I am going to be using my also new watercolour 36 pan set. So I'm just going off with some soft pinks here to start with. And I'm just using a brush to add some water to the cardstock and then I'm going to be dropping in some of the colours. I started off with the bolder outline to be the lightest shade, which was Puffy Heart. And I'm just going in with a light wash with this colour, just adding it all over. So I do two flowers in the pink, and then I go on to do one flower in purple. And I went for a pink and um, purple colour flowers because I thought they'd pop off the acrylic background that I just painted. For the purple, I'm using Midnight Violet, again giving a really light wash of the colour over the flower. For the second layer of the flowers, I'm using the same colours, but I'm just going to intensify the actual colour on the cardstock. So I'm going in, giving a couple layers of colour, adding more of the actual paint to the die cut to intensify it. 
With these as well, I'm also trying to add more of a colour down in the centre of the flower to allow that to sort of fade out a bit more to give more intensity into the flower to give it a bit more depth and dimension. So I'm just using more of the Midnight Violet for the purple flower, just adding more of that paint on and giving it several layers. And then for the pink flowers, again, I'm using Puffy Heart, adding more of the colour on and doing several layers to intensify the colour. For the last layer, I'm going back in and I'm then adding, for the purple, I'm using the Lavender Fields and really darkening it up, just adding a bit of variation with a slightly different more purple, which is slightly lighter to the Midnight Violet, but it has a different kind of tone to the purple, so it works quite well. As I said, I'm adding more of the pigment, more of the paint in the centre of the flower just to add some more depth and dimension. And then for the pink flower, I'm using purple wine as the last pink for that layer. So for the stems, I'm using a combination of different greens, frayed leaf, forest glaze, and a bit of evergreen, just to give it a bit of depth and dimension. I'm not painting these perfectly at some points. I'm adding the colour in a little bit patchy, allowing the colours to blend, just to give it a bit more added variation of depth, so that the leaves and the stems aren't completely flat. So once I'd done all those colours, I then decided to get my background back after it dry and I wanted to add some white paint splatters just to add a little bit more interest to the background. And I'm using my Ulta New Pure White Ink Spray. Unscrewing the top, just pulling out the uh, nozzle and just using the tube on its end just to splatter some of the ink over the top. This needs to set to one side to dry, however I'm quite impatient, so I get out my heat tool and just dry it on heat setting one. This will allow it to dry without burning the canvas. Here I'm just showing you that these are really, really easy to assemble. You just layer up each layer using a little bit of adhesive to glue them down and they give some really realistic and effective looking flowers. Because I haven't been perfect in painting them, I've added darker colours more in the middle, lighter colours towards the edge. It's got a lot of depth and variation to it. Because the petals aren't all perfect, it gives it so much interest and texture as well. So as I said, this video is part of the also new blog hop for the Crafted Flower Cosmos that's being released today. And part of the blog hop there is a giveaway. Also new have a total of $200 worth of prizes to give away and one lucky winner could win a $50 gift certificate. Make sure you, if you're watching this over on my YouTube channel that you do head over to my blog. You can find more details out there. Comment on the blog and then also follow along the hop. The more you comment, the better the chance to win. Alter New will announce the winners on their page on the 15th of Feb. Now once I did hear them, I added them to my background just to play about with the layout, whether I liked how it was looking. And I decided that I really liked the flowers and I liked the background, but I didn't feel that they quite gelled with each other just yet. There was something missing that wasn't really connecting the two pieces together. And then in the end, I decided it needed a little bit of pink in the background, just a very soft amount of pink colour just to add a connection between the background and the flowers. So I'm just using some pink and I've added a bit of white to it to tone it down and I'm just blending it on. Now, not all of my, my white ink splatters were completely dry and they did blend with it. It wasn't the end of the world. I found that the best way was to keep adding my flowers over the background to see how the colours were actually working with one another. Were they gelling and did it look right or did I need to add a little bit more colour? Once I was happy with how that went, I decided that I needed to do something about those white spots. Some of them were perfect, some of them weren't there and it didn't quite look right. So I thought why not get out my embossing powder. Now if you've caught my video before where I've done some acrylic painting with some heat embossing, I'll link to that here, you'll have seen that you can add heat embossing to your acrylic art. Because the ink splatters were still wet, I could easily just add my gold embossing powder over the top. It would stick to those splatters because the rest of the paint was actually dry and then I could heat emboss that with my heat gum. And this allows to add a little bit of gold flex to the background, a little bit more interest, and I really like this. So I decided to add a few more paint splatters once I'd done it once to add some more gold to it. So I prefer the gold to the white, but I did keep some white splatters as well. Now I just used some liquid adhesive to adhere these down. I added some foam pads behind some of the flowers to give them a bit more depth and dimension. And I'm just using liquid glue to adhere these down onto this canvas board because then I know that they will stay there quite well. They'll be nice and secure and they won't fall off. If I just use the foam pads on their own, they're likelihood that they could dislodge quite easily. Now I am letting the stems overhang and then I can just use my scissors to cut them off. 
Now I really loved how this was looking and thought it looked really good but I felt like it was missing something. So to finish this off I felt like it needed a sentiment or a saying for this little piece of artwork. So I used a sentiment from the Darling Rose stamp set which reads even the most beautiful flowers have to grow through dirt and I thought this was a really good saying just to go with these beautiful flowers. I heat embossed that sentiment onto some black cardstock with white embossing powder and then I just foam mounted it onto the front of the card. I hope you enjoyed today's video tutorial on showing you how to mix some of your different hobbies into one piece of artwork. If you haven't got any acrylic paints, don't worry, try and think out of the box. What have you got in your craft supply that you could use? Have you got some watercolour paints, some really interesting inks? Create a lovely ink blended background and then used a crafter flower to build up the dimension. If you want to take part in the blog hop, make sure you head over to my blog if you're watching on my YouTube channel. If you're new here, why not think about subscribing and give this video a thumbs up. In the comments below, why not let me know what kind of hobbies you like to mix. Until next time. Happy crafting!